We do. <laughs> there we go. On on dot on eight o'clock. Um, welcome one. Welcome all. If you come, if you don't, it'll just be me. Uh, to the Katie's Arms live on Wednesday. Katie's Arms usually, as we know, on a Friday at eight o'clock. But because I feel like I've missed. How many have I missed? Hello, hello my loves. Because I've missed a few. I wanna say I've missed two. I know I'm gonna miss this week's because I'm gonna be in Blackpool. Um, so, and I'm gonna be out in Blackpool on Friday night. So if you're in Blackpool on Friday night and you're gonna be at Weatherspoons, <laughs> I will be there. Um, so out in Blackpool on Friday. So I'm gonna miss another Katie's arm. So welcome, good afternoon from Texas, hello Canada, glad you're here. Germany is here as well, hello Germany. Thank you for joining us all. It's like Eurovision, but without the crap Irish guy in the gold jumpsuit. More on his testicles shortly. Someone there, Paul, on the bubbles already, well done. I'm uh, on my barefoot and people are so kind now. <laughs> when I was in Wales this week doing stand-up, everybody came with bottles of this. <laughs> I went home clanking like some homeless person on diamond white. Missed you, Chin Chin. Yes, I'm so sorry uh, that I haven't been around. I feel guilt, hence we're here now. Hello from Pratt's Bottom. Flanders is here, New Hampshire. And Hull, thank God. And Poland. Hazelmere in Surrey is here. Shall I just do this for the next however long? Hello from USA. Uh, Canvey Island, Cornwall, um, New York is here. So so you get the drift, but I could keep going. Portugal is here as well. Uh, Trump 2024. And why not? Why not throw that in? You get the impression. Everybody's here from all over the place. So thank you so much for joining. Um, and if you haven't come to the Katie's Arms before, um, this is your pub. We started it about three years ago, I think. Was that about right? Mm -hmm. We started the pub about three years ago when lockdown happened. When I say lockdown happened, what I mean by that is a bunch of complete twats decided it would be a good idea to test out how best to control a nation by removing every single freedom that they had including their ability to function as humans or be kind to each other. So that's what I mean by when lockdown happened. So when lockdown happened, we began the Katie's Arms as a way of pulling everybody through the madness. And uh, my way of doing that was reinstating pubs because we couldn't meet in pubs, um, asking people to come along and drink together. Uh, think what you want. Uh, your views are yours. You could be pro-lockdown if you wanted. Uh, but still needing a laugh. Uh, you can be vaccinated or not. You can be from religious or not. You can be as gay as a, as gay as the Lord, as trans as the Trans Pennine Express. It really didn't matter. So all the rules are here is that you have a laugh, uh, you drink, you or not, if you're a brilliant uh, uh, recovering alcoholic and have much more willpower than me, and that you laugh at me or you laugh at the world. And that's pretty much it. And you try and be supportive to other people on here. Uh, that's really, there's, there's, no, there's no rules. Essentially, what usually happens is I overshare massively uh, in a way that's not becoming, you know, to a lady. And then usually people ask me, people first time and say, oh my God, she's absolutely, you know, off her, she's off her nuts. People think I'm pissed as a fart. Whereas actually, if you come a lot... I mean, if you come to Katie's Arms a lot, don't know whether you come a lot or not. <gasps> Barely my business, but I do totally want to know all about it. <laughs> if you uh, come to the Katie's Arms a lot, you'll know that this genuinely is how, how I roll. This is how it is. Yes. What can we tell you? And uh, also we go to, yes, oh yes, we, we, we call it Katie's Arms because there was this whole thing about uh, when I was on the road, I was a little more in shape and I had some arms at the time, which I'm now hiding because they need work. So we called it the Katie's Arms after my <clears throat> biceps, but I would be ashamed to get those out. Oh, interesting story. Uh, in Wales, I want to say, was it Swansea or was it Perfleet? I met someone who applied for my Died Suddenly shirt. So do you know, ah, oh, bloody love you, Hopkins. Thank you. 
yeah, my specs. People think they're Jack Duckworth specs because they look like they've got tape here and here. <laughs> and I really like that idea, actually. But actually, we all know I'm not posh at all, don't we? Look. Look what they are. Oh, they're Tiffany. I know. <laughs> look, they were expensive, these glasses, let me tell you. However, I tend to think, right, if you're going to wear something on your face the whole time, like you spend money on clothes and shoes, right? And shoes just go on your bloody feet. And I can't be arsed with shoes, uh, particularly. So why not buy the glasses that you want? Also, lovely Mark. Oh, funny story about lovely Mark coming up. Uh, they do look like they glow in the dark. They look like I can turn them on. <laughs> like those twats that wear a head torch that they don't put on their house lights. <laughs> they look like I just turn them on here like headlights on a mini or something. That's not a bad idea. Um, I've got a funny story about Mark. I've got, I've got so many things to tell you. So let's all have a little drink. Cheers. And then I can tell you things and then hopefully we can get to questions before the end. <clears throat> so Mumsy was out today mm, at my house. Oh, I nearly fell off my stool. And we were doing the annual hanging basket ceremony. And this involves me purchasing things that I think you need in a hanging basket, small plants, soily stuff that hasn't got peat in anymore because you're not allowed peat because peat was really, really good at helping you grow things in hanging baskets. And obviously in the new world order, you're not allowed to have peat because I don't know, having peat in your hanging basket, I don't mean peat a guy, I mean peat as in P-E-A-T. Mm. Having peat in a hanging basket, I don't know what it does. I, I presumably it reduces Greta Thunberg's fertility or... I don't know, does it kill a vegan? I don't know. You're not allowed peat in soil anymore, even though it was really good. So anyway, I buy all the stuff and I buy the little plant things and then mother turns up in full combat hanging basket mode da, 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 with her gloves and a little trowley thing and then a little baby trowley thing. Oh shit, it's okay, I thought the wine was going. A little baby trowley thing that is a special trowel for when you want to put very little plants in. A ninja mum that turns up. Let me tell you, my mother drives a, what's the, um, help me, help me, help me. What's the Fiat called that's like, vroom, vroom, like a sporty one, roof down. Is it our, I want to say our bath. Did I make that up? Our bath. My mum drives that. So mum turns up in a ninja combat hanging basket outfit in her fear our bath and we create hanging baskets so that's what we did today and then mum takes home the spare stuff and then what happens every single year is that our our breath our breath our birth our bath anyway it's the it's the our bath thank you yes it's the super sporty one mum's got it in black and she sits around going and if old people get in her way or piss her off She's like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> anyway, um, and every single year, mum's hanging baskets are better than mine and do better than mine. But then that's fine because she's mum and that's that's what she deserves. But she comes out and helps me do mine. And it's become like a thing, which I love. Shall we take the piss out of lovely Mark? Here we go. <clears throat> you may know that backyard comedy club in London, uh, Lee Hurst, says I can play at his club so I can do stand up there. You may know that that's where Comedy Unleashed also does its stuff. And I've tried to join the boys, right, on Comedy Unleashed because they're like, we're the free speech comedians. Yeah, we're stand up for free speech and we're funny. And I've gone, can I come? Can I, can I do warm up? Can I just do five minutes? Can I show you what I can do? And they will not let me. So, if you can't join them, fuck them, right? I mean, not literally, because I think quite a lot of them are ginger, and obviously, I don't do that. So Comedy Unleashed wouldn't let me join their gang, because obviously they're boys, and I'm funnier than they are. <laughs> no, and so I said, you know, so fine, I've asked, I've asked politely, I've offered to be their warm-up, I've offered to, you know, lick their boots, whatever, but I'm not licking their willies, and uh, they wouldn't let me. Fine. They don't want me to play in their patch. Fuck them. 
but also well done, keep going because you're on our side. Um, and so I uh, decided, well, we'll just take over Backyard Comedy Club with Lee's kind permission and he agreed. And so we sold that out <laughs> in 24 hours. I, I, I don't want to say that um, Comedy Unleashed can't sell out. But anyway, so we sold out, brilliant, 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 right? And it's going to be on, isn't it, the 24th of May. Hmm? Are you coming? Are you coming? Are you coming? You'd love to see me and Farage work together, fuck me. Well, to be in the same room as that breath, I'd probably need a ventilator, but also Farage doesn't share the stage with someone like me. Because it has to be about, it has to be about Farage. La 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 la. Da, 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 da. Farage cannot share the stage with anybody who might compete, only lesser people. Um, so it's the 24th of May, right? It's going to be epic. I can't wait. It's going to go off. It's going to be great. Um, no doubt we'll be able to book loads more of them and everything. What do you think lovely Mark put on the tickets? Hmm. Bear in mind, lovely Mark designs the tickets, prints them off. We have a conflab. He prints off this fucking database thing. I can't do a date. I can't do detail. And I'm not very good at doing a job diligently without going, fuck, let's go and do this. Or I could be making a video about this. Or did you see this happen? I've got to go. Uh, I, I have the concentration span of a small, a small tadpole with half a tail. But yet I do ticket packing because I want everybody who comes to a show to know <laughs> that I... <laughs> that you can have syphilis too. No, I want everyone that comes to a show to know that I packed the ticket because then it, you know that it matters, that I care that you spent money, that uh, obviously a lot of the money just goes to the, the club and stuff. It like supports the club and the staff and the everyone. But I want you to know that I care. So I, uh, I packed the tickets. So I packed 300 tickets for backyard, Mark printed them, Mark did the database, and then we sent them out. And guess what we found out after that? He's only got and put the wrong date on the ticket. <laughs> he put June. <laughs> ah, Wednesday the 24th of June, he put the correct date. Let's say this a few times, shall we? The correct date this is my graphic design husband, <laughs> man of detail, <laughs> man that calls me slapdash Lil. Uh huh. So old Mr. Perfect Pants, I used to work at Saatchi. I'm a man of detail. Nothing gets past me. I'm lovely Mark and I literally have done no wrong in my whole life. La la la. And yeah, I just pass it to me. Yeah, if it's design oriented, yeah, give it to me because it'll be immaculate and everyone will say it's great. La la la. He put the wrong month on the ticket. <laughs> now you could say, Katie, why are you taking the piss out of A, your own husband, B, a husband who's trying to help you, uh, C, a guy who doesn't have to help you for shit and you wouldn't have any of these tickets or a database or anything if it wasn't for lovely Mark, and D, the shit he's had to put up with from you. Do you think this really counts? Yes, I do. Because this is a bloody great big error. And it's in print. And I'm going to die for as long as we're married. I'm going to dine out on this. And in fact, the other day we were having an argument about the location of the pillow on the bed. It was important. He did that thing where he tries to shove it over my bit. I need space. And I was like, I'm not the one who put the wrong month on the tickets. <laughs> so that's that. Uh, that's happy news. I've got some sad news. Oh, yes, look, you just checked yours. You hadn't noticed. So what I need you to do is email landlord at katiesarms.com. Oh, my God. I just realised my ticket says June. Oh, I thought this was in May. Oh, my God. It looks like my ticket's wrong. Who would make such a terrible error? Oh, have you got some retard working for you? Oh, like, give it loads. <laughs> but please, no, please come to Backyard in May. It, otherwise, I'm just going to have to book in June as well. Maybe that's what I should have done already. That. I do have some sad news. Are you ready? I will email your husband and complain. I love this. Everybody's going to do it and he's going to know. <laughs> 
He's currently taking our daughter to Guys and Dolls in Bath because she wanted to go with him, not me. <laughs> that is actually really, really good parenting skills. If you have teenagers, particularly girls, make it so that it's a real treat to go with daddy. And it's so nice and oh, I'll sort the tickets out. Oh, sure, and I'll book dinner for you. And oh, but what it really means is you get the whole freaking day to yourself. And you act like you're the, oh, that's so nice, you're all going together. But secretly, you get rid of the whole family. Um, I have to tell you some sad news. I'm really, really sorry. So you'll know I was booked at Bedford Corn Exchange after we did Blackpool and gave it their biggest weekend in history. And all these theatres went, yeah, I want a bit of that. And booked. And then one by one they pulled because a particular stalker and councils and whatever just pull. So Bedford Corn Exchange, they pulled and they made a statement, uh, Bedford, said that we are an inclusive council. We are a diverse and inclusive council. I don't know if they had head epilepsy or not, but no, Joey Deacon, yeah, exactly. I was doing Joey Deacon on stage the other night. Jesus Christ. I am going to come off stage one of these nights and the West Midlands, because it's always them, police are going to be there to like, hate speech. Anyway, uh, so Bedford Council, Bedford Corn Exchange pulled because they're so inclusive and so diverse. <laughs> as long as you think exactly the same thing as they do. Mm, Joey Deacon. Uh, and there was a campaign to let me come, let Katie come. I mean, exactly. Wish more would. Uh, and someone found a venue. The venue said they would hold firm. Little social club, you know, like back end of nowhere. Usually doing some, you know, crazy buffet with like old sausage rolls from Asda. But we're going to bring live, laugh, love there because I will not be stopped. And what do you think happened uh, a couple of days ago? They didn't tell me. They told the guy that found the venue. They pulled. Uh, we were told, we rang the venue because I offered to go and see them. I offered to go and show them the show. I offered to meet with them so they can see what they're dealing with, which is like this, it's not, it, you know, it's nothing. It's just a lady laughing at herself and her nipple hair and her issues and the fact that I piss myself when I sneeze. Uh, and I tried that, they wouldn't allow. Uh, they said that the secretary of the committee, I mean, this place barely has a roof, uh, had come under pressure from the council. And so they've pulled. So I'm so sorry that an email has gone out. Uh, I am telling you here, if you were supposed to be coming to Bedford on the 17th of May, that event, the venue has pulled and they will not allow me to try and reinstate it. And I don't know what to tell you other than what I've written to you personally in an email is that I will not be stopped. Um, I'm so sorry you've been messed around. You will of course have a full refund Lovely Mark has the money. It will be sent straight to you. Uh, any problems with that, you just get straight in touch, but you'll have your money back. But more importantly, we won't be stopped. We will keep going. We will find more venues. We will bring this show to you. We will. It might take me two years. It might take me five. We're going to make this happen. And so uh, to Blackpool, we have to start pulling to Blackpool. We don't have any seats left, actually, in a thousand seater theatre. Uh, it's sold so fast. They're so thrilled up there. So this uh, Saturday, 13th of May, I, I appreciate it's a strong shout and a big ask, but if you were coming to Bedford, if you're determined not to be told no, you're very welcome uh, to come up to Blackpool. So there's that. So good news, bad news, you know, we roll with it. Guess what Southwest water dropped through my door today? Last night, I was in the village on my hands and knees, clearing up flood water for two elderly, people who live on a farm, the farm that trained my daughter, uh, 78 year olds trying to get water out of their house because we're flooded so badly here, right? And the school was flooded and the farmer that we, uh, my daughter works with was out in the JCB trying to get the school kids out of the school and the pub is underwater. What do you think arrived on my doorstep today? Save every drop. A lecturing lecture from Southwest Water on how an area that is currently underwater with flood water needs to save every drop. An area that's on a hosepipe ban 
but has people who no longer have a downstairs of their house because of flood water got delivered a leaflet. This came today telling me, lecturing me with my money because I help pay for this to save every drop. I dare you, Southwest Water. I dare you to come and knock on my door because I have a few choice words for you and a few of them need to come from they're more physically, they're more animated. Absolute fuckers. Talking of absolute fuckers, Piers Morgan. <laughs> Just imagining this is the piss of Piers Morgan as he slowly pisses himself. whilst pretend, pretending to be the big guy. So in the High Court, in the Harry case about uh, him being phone hacked, uh, the, his uh, barrister, his team have just come out and said, Piers Morgan knew about the phone hacking. Of course he fucking knew. I've worked for these editors. I work for the editor of the Daily Mail. It is not a joke working for these boys. It is brutal. It is ruthless. If they think you fucked up, they ring you and they tell you you fucked up. They never want to see you again. They don't want to see you again in those heels. I don't want to see your face until you make this column right. You don't deserve to be on this paper. It is brutal. And Piers Morgan is sweating from the nuts. And I know that boy. And that boy, what he thinks, because it's old school comms, right? Old school. If you're, if you're being attacked, you're being attacked. What you do is you come out... Whoo, and you come out hard. So he's done <clears throat> a BBC interview with a twatting BBC interviewer that just wants a bit of fame. And he's <clears throat> coming out going, I think it's Harry who should be apologising for invading the privacy of the royal family. Buh, 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 like Billy Big Balls. He is shitting it. I know Piers. I know what he's doing. I know how he operates. He's going to be shitting it. And he's going to be sweating, sweating, sweating like a little sweaty Betty. Because all of his power play, which does involve Camilla and Charles, but his power play, his Fox News, his Murdoch relationships, all of that stuff is starting to wither away. And all of the stuff, the dark arts that used to protect Piers Morgan, Gary fucking Lineker, um, they've been melting away. And now he reminds me of the little fawn, you know, the baby deer. That the deer are there and they've you know they're surviving the season but one of them gets bitten and it's got an injury and the next time the dogs go for the deer you know there's the one with the injury and they can smell the injury and as they run for it it can't run as fast as the rest you think i'm salivating about this <laughs> yes yes i am <laughs> i've always said there's this thing, right, which doesn't apply. And I'm not having a sad on about being a woman because, you know, I got over that a long time ago. I've always said uh, the redemption of the male, right? So if you're me and you do one little tiny thing, like insinuate the eradication of all people that belong to the religion of peace, I didn't do that, but that's what the papers said. You're eviscerated from the face of the planet for five years, you know, banned from everything, have your home taken, your jobs your bank account, the rest. You know the story. If you're a guy, Piers Morgan, you can do it over and over and over. You can fake photos of our troops and put them in danger and you're re-employed. You can hack the phone, allegedly, of dead kids and you survive. In fact, you're promoted. You can be a shit show and storm off ITV in a huff and you get promoted and rewarded with a mega show that is promoted globally and yet only attracts 20,000 viewers. But you know what my mother says is sometimes all you have to do is wait. And finally, the clock is ticking for Piers Morgan. And one shouldn't gloat, but fuck it, I'm going to. <laughs> I hope, Piers, you're so sweaty. I know you won't sleep tonight and I know you're going to keep playing Billy Big Bollocks. But I know you, Piers, and you're not enjoying one single sticky moment of this. And I hope the ginger one, Prince Harry, goes for you in every which way. Because I'm going to quite enjoy it, quite frankly. And I'm not even going to feel guilty about being low. I'm not going to take the moral high ground. I'm going to slither on my belly 
like a festering pond dweller and look up at your rogered anus and laugh. <laughs> Let's talk about Ireland. <laughs> Did you see any of the Eurovision Song Contest? You may say, like my father, I'm sick of Eurovision. I'm sick of hearing those boys on Radio 2. I'm sick of Ryland. I'm sick of Scott Mills. I can't stand Scott Mills, honestly. I'm sorry if you're a fit, you know, you love him. Just something about mm, uh, Scott Mills. I'm done. Right, and I hear you. My father will never again listen to Radio 2 because of Ken Bruce. I get it. There's a male thing. But I put it on last night because why was I feeling the need to just sit and be brain dead? Oh, yes, because I'd been in the village clearing up the flood water whilst receiving leaflets from Southwest Water telling me, don't waste a drop. I've been on my hands and knees with a vax, which suck up water. Did you know? It's like a Henry Hoover that sucks up water. Very, very. <laughs> so I know. Are uh, them some skills? Uh, it's like a it's like a Hoover that sucks up water. Oh, that's what I did for two hours last night. Mm. So when I came in, not only did I need a wash, because I don't know what was in those carpets, but I put on Eurovision and just thought, right, I've got my wine, I've got my cheese, beautiful chocolate, watching Eurovision. Did you see, just watching your, watching your comments in case I should actually answer someone, how funny was I at Wokefest? Ah, amazing Swansea gig. Funniest fat bird ever. Oh my God. So I turned up as Phoebe, the woke protester with my purple hair. And I went past and the, the protesters all gave me a round of applause because I turned up with my sign that says stand up to racism. And I walked past all the police wagons who were there, I think for me. But of course, because I was as Phoebe, they didn't recognise me. And I did my stand up as Phoebe, but I went switch back to me because Phoebe's really vulgar and annoying. And there was a massive lady there. Chumbawamba, and uh, she'd come along, first time out of her house for nine years, maybe because she couldn't get through the front door. Uh, she'd appreciate that, that's why I'm saying it. And she was like, Hopkins, I came here for the fat bird jokes, so I want fat bird jokes. And I was like, oh no, I haven't got any fat bird jokes. We found some, we found some. And she was just epic. And that's why, audience, that's why this stand up is so important to me, because of the audience. Right, hold on, what were we talking about? Piers Morgan Island. Okay, so I come back in from clearing up from the flood. That's me doing an impression of a vax in the flood with the old people. There was quite a lot of rabbit shit. I don't know where that came from. Moving along. Come in, wine, cheese, chocolate, sofa, dogs. Watch a bit of Eurovision, have a Ming the Mong. Ireland. Hmm? Did you see? I'm a fucking breath of fresh air. Thank you. I'm a pain in the arse, actually, but, you know. <laughs> uh, ooh, news on the varicose vein. Booper say they might strip it out of my leg for me. OK, back to Ireland. Did you see Ireland? <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Jumble Wumba, I know. Come on, someone, someone. Saw you in Saturday in Purfleet. We had such a great evening. Holy shit, did we have a laugh. <gasps> So my, my metric now is actually someone pissing themselves, which I achieved in Maplethorpe. A lady pissed herself on the front row. <laughs> we are, these are blinding, these events. We are proper laughing. So, so it's a, such a joy. Um, anyway, mm, Ireland, did you see him? Did you see him? Google him immediately. Now, Google Ireland Eurovision. I don't know who these, who oh. these utter cockwombles were. Slightly tubby, but in all the wrong places, Ireland, whatever their singer was, someone help me. <laughs> um, slightly chubby boy, all in one, all in one, glitter suit, gold lame, glitter, what I'm going to have to demonstrate. Oh, I've got my Phoebe trousers on. Hold on. I need some space for my cr enormous crotch. So, oh, look at, can I just show you this? Look at that. Look, do you see how that button is? Obviously, I'm putting my shoulders back massively. Look at it. Look at the strain from my enormous boobs. So anyway, a uh, guy in gold jumpsuit. You know the one? So he had... Um, so he's singing, but he's obviously miming because the microphone. He's got no microphone skills whatsoever. So the microphone's all over while he's pretending to sing. 
This gold jumpsuit is possibly three sizes too small. It looks like it's been sprayed on, but in a terrible way because he hasn't got any muscles. He hasn't got a stomach. He hasn't got a waist and he hasn't got thighs. He's got nothing going on. And here in this area, the triangle of power, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. And I'm like looking hard now. There was nothing there. Did you see? Yes, he was trying to be like Harry Styles. That's it. That is, it was basically flat. There was no, there was just no cock. But then there were two things, which I think may have been his tiny testicles. I'm unsure. Could have been baked beans. But they were severed, split by the seam so that one small prune testicle was one side of the of the hefty seam and the other was the other. So there was a line, like like almost like a face. That was one of his testicles, that was the other, and then there was a seam, but there was no, there was no Irish penis. Can someone help me? Can someone help me? I don't know what was going on, but it's very, very important. I must go because you need your evening back, but it, you must Google Ireland Eurovision. This is me showing you how you type. <laughs> well, I'm missing you don't know because your name's Joey G. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Please Google Ireland Joey. No, I, no, stop. Ireland gold jumpsuit. Zoom in, big styly on the crotch. Look at the way those testicles are separated. I don't know if it was like a political statement. Northern Ireland, Southern Ireland. Was it a thing about Brexit? I don't know. He didn't look that intelligent, if I'm honest. It's very important that you do this because it's the comedy moment. I looked, nothing there. Get on it. Come on, come on, look, look. Don't listen to me. Look at the Irish cock. Tell me, question for the audience, where is the Irish entry's penis. Exactly. Looks like he's got a camel toe. Yes, but more than that, isn't it? It's more like that. It's not just like a camel too, like ladies kind of, whoop. it's more like a, mm, like a, like a, a gorge, but that way. Oh, be some chafing. probably dipping it in the Irish Sea as we speak to cool it off. Right, darlings, that was it. That, I mean, what did you learn? Nothing. We learned that uh, lovely Mark definitely needs an email telling him that you're so worried because you can't believe your ticket would be wrong. <laughs> Obviously, Bedford Council need to do one and we can all enjoy the tears or blood of Piers Morgan because he'll be pissing blood by the end of the week out of sheer panic about what's going to come out about him. Because believe me, there's a lot of closets and a lot of skeletons. Um, okay, we are going to see you. When I say we, I mean me and you and us. Jesus just looked, you see, just saw it. Come on, gold lame foo-foo. So if someone told me that he was a lady pretending to be a guy, I'd be like, oh, I get it. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. But it's just that I think he's pretending to be a guy who's a guy, but he hasn't got a knob, which is also cool. Like, OK, you didn't get born with a knob. There we are. I didn't get born with boobs. You know, it's just padding from Victoria's Secret. But um, in hot pink, I know, right? But then I would probably not have worn that. I'm just, you've got to look. Uh, I'll see you in Blackpool. If you can come to Blackpool, for fuck's sake, come because it's going to be a blast. Or October in Blackpool is already selling out, which is making my heart slightly palpitate. Like 400 seat, I think, already sold. It's crazy. You guys are crazy. You're crazy. But what I can promise you is if you come, we have a laugh. And not only that, people say, you know, I came on my own and I left with friends. People say it reminded me of what my life was like used to go into a pub, have a laugh and come home and feel a bit better and have a nice sleep. That's what these events are. Um, and I'm so, I'm really lucky. I know I am, uh, but let's not go there because it'll set me off. Um, okay, um, please, yes, anywhere um, you can get me a venue. If you can go and say, would you have Katie Hopkins? She'll sell out, she'll tip your staff, 
you'll have the biggest night you've had uh, you'll make money but you just have to hold you have to have a spine when one little cretin comes for you and says katie's the biggest hitler there is i just need these venues to hold you can find me a venue you have my word i will be there landlord at katie's arms uh, dot com do uh, do let me know thank you so much uh, to everybody for joining thank you for being part of katie's arms i won't see you on friday because i'll be uh, out and about in Blackpool, actually encouraging people to come to the show on Saturday night on the pier. And um, and I will catch up with you uh, very, very soon. Look after each other uh, here. See you in three days. Oh, I can't wait to see everybody. Um, is there a minimum capacity? No, 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 not at all. Um, 75, we do a lot. And often if someone's got like a cafe that can fit or a restaurant that fits 75, uh, we can book two nights or even three, so like Wales, I did three nights uh, in Swansea because we could, we just couldn't, we just kept selling out. So uh, it doesn't matter where it is, doesn't matter how hard it is to get to, it doesn't matter if it doesn't have, I don't know, toilets, <laughs> it doesn't need stuff, we just need to be able to get together. Um, that's my commitment. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will, uh, I'll see you somewhere very soon on the road. <laughs>